In today's video, we're talking about timers in Swift. Now, timers can be used in numerous ways. Uh, here are two real world examples of how I use them in the Luna app. So here we are at the bottom of our volcano level, right? So every couple of seconds, I wanna shake the screen and sprite kit to add to that ambiance that's on a timer. Uh, and the other example is when our user blows into the device and shoots their rocket up. At the top of the animation, we wanna pause for a second. We don't wanna just immediately move them onto the next screen. So that's on a timer. So those are two examples of how to use timers. We're gonna dive into some others here in a bit. But first I gotta thank today's sponsor and that is Squarespace. To get your online presence or beautiful developer portfolio up and running, head on over to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to check them out. So those Aluna examples were a little involved. Let's talk about some simpler examples that we're gonna do today. And as you see on the screen here, we're gonna change the background color of our view controller every second to a random color. Uh, we're gonna cycle through that. We're gonna put that on a timer. Uh, and then in other examples, I'm gonna show you how to increment the count of a label every second as well. Now, I know these are vastly different examples than the, the cool Aluna stuff that I showed, but honestly, like the setup is the exact same. Like what you do based on the timer can be different, but setting up the timer is gonna be the same. Anyway, since this video is focused on timers, I went ahead and set up a starter project, but I'll take 10, 15 seconds to walk through it real quick to let you know what's going on. Uh, basically here in this configure label function, just setting up our label programmatically, right? We're, we're making a really big font or text aligning at center, and then I'm constraining it to the dead center of the screen. And then I do have a color extension here that gives us a random color here for the red, green, blue value. We're doing a random CG float zero to one, and that's how we're creating our random color. And then you see here in view to load, we're calling background color equals dot random. So that's the function we're gonna to use to cycle through our random colors. So with that out of the way, let's get to our timers. So the first thing we gotta do is set up a variable called timer, and it is of type timer, believe it or not. And the reason we're defining this outside, because we're gonna be using this in various functions that you'll see here uh, in a bit. Uh, so now that we have our timer variable here in view did load, we could do timer equals timer dot schedule timer. And you wanna select the one that has uh, repeats in the selector and the target and everything. So the time interval, this is however long you want your timer to be. We're gonna use one second. Uh, you can make this 10 seconds, 30 seconds, 10 minutes, uh, but it is in seconds. So however you wanna convert that. Again, we're gonna change it every second. Target is gonna be self. Now the selector is gonna be whatever function you want it to fire off every second. So you do hashtag selector at OBJC method. So now we need our method. So let's create that down here at OBJC, func change background. And here in this change background method, we want to do view dot background color equals dot random to give us our random color. And so again, this is what's going to fire off every second in our timer. So let's make sure we call that function change background. And here user info is going to be nil. And we're not passing in any extra info to our timer. And then repeats, you can set true or false. We want this timer to repeat. So we're going to set this to true. If we only wanted this to fire off once, like say we change this to 10 seconds and we only wanted to change our background color once after 10 seconds, we would set this to false uh, like this and set that to 10. However, we don't want to do that. We want it to repeat every second. So let's test this out. Uh, our background color should be cycling through every second. Yep, see, we're getting a random color every second. And because we're repeating, this will go on uh, forever, if we, or as long as the app is running. So one key thing you need to remember about uh, repeating timers, if you have it set to true, is you're creating a strong uh, reference here. So you have to invalidate the timer to stop it, or else it'll still be going off in memory somewhere. So in order to do that, you have to call timer.invalidate. So in order to show you how to do that, I'm also gonna introduce like a new way to do a timer because what we wanna do is we wanna invalidate our timer, like let's say after five seconds, so our random colors will stop. So another way to do that, and this is a non-repeating timer here, if you do dispatch q.main.async after, and you see you get a deadline, and if you dot now, that is like right now, and then you can add, we're gonna do it after five seconds. If you wanted to stop it after 10 seconds, 20 seconds, that's what we would put here. We're gonna do this after five seconds and we're gonna call self.timer.invalidate. So what this does is gonna invalidate our timer after five seconds. And this is also an example of using timers uh, where you only want it to fire off once. So back to the Aluna real world examples where I was shaking the screen every six seconds. 
that is this repeating timer, like just this, except this was like every six seconds. And then the function I called was our, my shake screen function. So like I said, same setup, it just matters what you're doing in the function. And then the other Luna example where they shoot the rocket shit up and I transfer to the next screen after like two seconds, that was this type of timer, right? I'm just dispatching to the q.main.async after about two or three seconds. And then I transition to the screen again, just so the UI like wasn't so abrupt. Um, so like I said, the way you set up the timers is the same pretty much no matter what you do. So anyway, to test this out, let's run this and our cycles of colors should stop after about five seconds. So probably a couple more seconds. Hopefully we stop on a cool color and nice. We stopped on a puke mustard green. Perfect. <laughs> so anyway, you see our timer fired off after five seconds here, and then we call timer.invalidate, and that invalidated our timer. It stopped it. Um, so again, remember, if you're repeating the timer, you want to definitely invalidate it. So now let's show you how to increment the count label. So we need our function uh, to increment count label. So at objc func increment count label. And here we're going to need a count variable. So up here, var count equals zero. So that's going to be an int. And the so this is going to fire off every second. Well, let's make sure we do that. So let's copy this here. Oops, and paste that. So now we're calling increment count label every second. And we want to do count plus equals one. And then we want to do count label dot text equals, and we can cast our int to a string like this, count. So now uh, we're gonna basically show the count on the label every second and it's going to count up. So let's run it and test it out. And we're gonna get a random color in the beginning too. So red, okay, cool. There's our label counting up every second. So you can see how you can do this again with a repeating timer. Now, that repeating timer thing is key. We're not invalidating this timer. Uh, a good safe way to make sure your timer's always invalidated uh, is to do it in view will disappear. So you can do view will disappear super.view will disappear animated and you can do timer.invalidate this will this will ensure that when the view goes away you're invalidating your timer now if you're looking up timers in swift that means you're an ios developer and ios developers need a great online developer portfolio to help you get future jobs or win contracts and that brings me to today's sponsor squarespace squarespace is an all-in-one platform to help you get that beautiful online presence or ios developer portfolio up and running so you can get that job now we're iOS developers, not front-end web developers. So if you wanna save some time, Squarespace is a great way to get your developer portfolio up and running quickly. And aside from beautiful templates, they have great features like SEO tools and analytics, all that stuff to help you get started. So head on over to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, so that was timers in Swift. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like my teaching style, check out the link in the description uh, or go to seanallen.teachable.com. I've started to launch my own courses, so check them out. All right, see you in the next video.